Okay, listen up, guys. You heard the man. You need to like and subscribe to Serious and Silliness. You won't regret it. Lots of good stuff out there. All right, thank you. Okay, we got Nicole Sullivan, IFBB professional figure girl. How are you doing, Nicole? Hi, I'm great. Good, Happy good, to be good. Here. I'm glad. It's actually, well, so I met you last week at the NPC Muscle Beach, and you were helping me backstage give out the trophies because I yeah. had a booth. I was a vendor. And then you told me you were a pro figure girl, and I never had a pro figure girl. And then I got, I met Michelle. I think her name is Michelle. Michelle, yeah. Who is also another pro figure girl. So I just figured I'll make this week pro figure girl week. That's it. Look at that. <laughs> so uh, when did you turn pro? Um, 2021. What show was it? Universe. Team Universe? Yeah. Okay. And how many... NPC shows did you do before you did universe and turn pro? Um, <laughs> I feel like people hate me when I say I was, that. I know. That's why I asked you. You told me, you told me that. A, do you do, do, does anybody roll your eyes when you say that? Uh, yeah. I, I'm not the type of person that like, will like brag that I'm a pro or like, honestly, like Sean that I work with yeah. the other expediter like whenever i meet people and introduce myself he's always like she's a pro and i'm like would you stop yeah, like i get like yeah because yeah. i feel not that i don't deserve it because i know i deserve it but it's just crazy like you're backstage with all these girls and like i was brand new to bodybuilding and um you, i just heard like so many girls talking about how like they did like you know eight shows 10 shows 12 mm -hmm. like been trying to get a pro card for years and you know I had no idea I was going to win my pro card that day. Like, so I kind of felt like I felt bad for them in a way. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like it wasn't fair. Like these girls are working their asses off and then I do two shows and I'm a pro, but at the same time, like I know my work ethic and like the, how hard I worked and everything. And so at the same time, I'm happy and I'm proud of myself, but you know, I don't, I don't necessarily like to like brag. Oh, I only did one show and yeah, you know. right, right. <laughs> but well, yeah. That that's, That's the truth. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know, I'll just be honest too. The, uh, most uh, most people in the you know bodybuilding world, fitness world, whatever you want to call it, they they have pipe dreams, mm. all right. And they they do they they show up, and it's like I don't know who told you to come on stage. I don't know what you're thinking. And then there are people that you know show up, and you go, ah, okay, that guy's got it, or that girl's got it. So you were one of those girls. You were the girl that showed up at whatever NPC show you did to qualify for the team universe. And Tampa Pro. And you went, you say that again? I did the Tampa Pro, the, well, the amateur. Okay. And then, you know. and then, In 20, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, and that's, and that happens to be the truth. I mean, it's great that uh, so many people like doing it and it's more mainstream than ever because of divisions like yours and divisions like wellness and men's physique but the truth of the matter is the majority of people um they don't know what they're getting into and they're not as good as they think they're and yeah that's, that's the truth but you on the other hand so it's 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 actually a good thing because that's how you know you're going to be a top pro if you if you continue now do you, do you plan on doing any pro shows yeah okay. eventually <laughs> yeah not this year uh no no. So I'm in nursing school and I actually have my last semester coming up. I graduate in December. So I tr my last prep, actually part of it, I was in school and it was just like, it was extremely hard. Um, it's just, it's too much to do both at once. Um, it's a lot of studying and like, it's a lot being like no carbs and trying to study and pass exams and go to clinicals and fit the gym in and fit. And it was just like insane. And I don't, I did it, you know, I became pro like I did it, but yeah. I will never put myself through that again. Um, when it comes down to it for me, like my main priority is school and my career mm -hmm. and then bodybuilding. It's more of like a hobby for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't blame you. I mean, because I don't know how anybody could concentrate on the last couple of weeks of prep. I mean, I've did a few NPC shows and I literally wanted to kill people. I was, it it's was ridiculous. Rocked. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not easy, yeah. but so I'm going to finish it? and then I'll see, I'll see what my coach thinks go from there. Yeah. I'm sure you'll, you'll wind up. I mean, you're too good not to, 
you know, and, and yeah. I'm, not, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. That's, that's the God's honest truth. You're too good not to. If you turn pro after one NPC show, then you should continue to do a pro show, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So you have, you have a story, but it's, it's a great underdog turnaround story. And I love stories like that <laughs> because uh, um, it shows the character of the person when you're able to turn your life around the way you did. Absolutely. So do you want to get into that? Sure. Um, so actually, before I even get started, it's funny because I, for the longest time, was like ashamed and kind of like embarrassed of my story and what I've been through. And I kind of literally like that girl died and this is a new girl and I'm never going to go back there type of thing. Like, I didn't want anybody to know. I didn't want people to judge me. I wanted to have like a clean slate. And Nate Spear um, at one of the Connecticut shows that I was working, he did like a guest posing and he started talking um, at the podium and he shared that he had a very similar story to me and like it clicked. And I was like, you know what? Like it, it just, it gave me the chills. Like I was like, why am I going to hide that? Why am I going to like bury that part of my life? Like it made me who I am today. And like so- someone out there might be struggling and might need to hear my story it's like maybe it'll inspire them it'll show them that like good things are possible you know what i mean and like life can be good so thank you nate if you ever watch this but (laughs) um hearing him definitely was like wow i'm not gonna hide that anymore but um yeah so i basically um i was an alcoholic drug addict for years um i started go-go dancing at the age of 16 I want to say 15 or 16 I think it was my 16th birthday actually um and that was it like I just I had like a rough childhood like a lot of like trauma and like mental like mental health battles and I just like fell in love with that like nightlife lifestyle and you know tried my first drug and that was it and I was like found my escape and there was no looking back so um you know, at first it was fun and like, it looked fun on the outside and then it got really, really dark and ugly. And it's crazy. Cause like, as I got older, like 19, 20, I knew I was so much better than that. And like, I knew deep down, like it wasn't me, but I just was so stuck. Uh, it was all I knew, like since a little girl, you know what I mean? I literally, all I did was just work in clubs and do drugs and party and I didn't know anything else. And um, I envied like the girls I went to high school with that were like in college and like starting families and like doing all this stuff. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, I I can't I can't do this. I got to stop. But I couldn't stop. And um, long story short, I so I lived in Rhode Island at the time. And um, one of my best friends at the time, like told my mom everything because I like lied to everybody. Uh, I was very manipulative. Like my mom thought that I was living with a friend and I was living in my car and, um, you know, I had like different apartments and like didn't pay bills. So I had like cold water and no electric and would fucking go to bed with like jackets and winter hats. And like, I didn't see anything wrong because I was fine. Like I, as long as I had my Coke bag and my bra, like I was fine. And I, uh, my mom found out and she basically said like, you're either moving to your dad's or you're going to rehab. And looking back, I wish I went to rehab, but I didn't. So I moved to New Jersey and my dad actually like didn't want me to live with him, want nothing to do with me. So my grandma and my aunt let me live with them and I moved to Atlantic city with them So you could probably guess where that went. Yeah, yeah. So it was good for like a couple months. And then uh, I went right back into the lifestyle and started dancing at the clubs there and yada, yada. Fast forward, I met my husband and he had already been clean for a couple of years. And um, I, I didn't like realize that I had a problem. Like I knew, I guess when you're an addict, you kind of like just try to justify it and say like, Oh, I only do it on at nighttime. I only do it like whatever. Like you try to like make it seem like you're not, but you are. And he helped me realize and I got help and fast forward. I'm coming up on eight years clean. Very nice. Congratulations. uh, Thank you. And we actually, I'm sorry, sorry, but 
of alcohol and drugs? Yes, everything. I haven't had a sip of alcohol in eight years. Nothing. Oh, good, good. Um, so. So your, your, your husband was like, like your savior almost. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you know, I, I kept dating people like in the lifestyle I was in, cause that's how I met people. And I want, I like yearned to like be with somebody who's normal and like, just have like some sense of like calmness and not always be like partying and high and whatever. Like I just wanted to just do normal things like go to the movies or like just hang out and do nothing. Like, and I just never had that. And, um, I was at the gym and we met and I like, was so envious. I was so attracted to like the fact that he could have fun without being drunk and like could talk to people and without going. And I didn't know how to do that. Like I was so, I couldn't have a conversation without being high or drunk. And um, so, yeah, so we went to meetings together and I got clean. And like I said, I'm coming up on eight years and, and we like met in the gym. So uh, I started working out a lot with him and at the time, like back then, I hated bodybuilding. I hated it. I thought it was so stupid. I thought all the girls looked manly and it was like, nope, I want nothing to do with it. And, uh, but it gives you structure. Know, yeah. You know, like I, it gives you structure. Am I right? Yeah. And I felt like, um, I became addicted to the gym, but it was like a healthy, it's addiction, a good addiction, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I still am shit. And, um, I need it for like my mental health. More importantly, like the muscles are just extra. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, my favorite thing is to just go to the gym and just escape and put music on and just like whatever emotions I need to let go. I just let go with the weights. And um, that's my high for me these days. And it has been for a long time. And people would say to me like, Oh, you need to do a bodybuilding competition. Like you would do so good. And I, I was like, no way. No, I wouldn't. And actually people told me to do bikini <laughs> and, uh, I found my coach, Shane Hughley, and God bless him for putting up with me because I knew nothing when I started in 2019, like nothing, brand new to the sport, absolutely nothing. And I asked so many questions like, do I weigh my rice when it's cooked or not cooked? Like stupid shit like that. You know? like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine how. Don't, don't, don't worry. You worked with the uh, guy Del Corso on, on Saturday. Just, you could ask him because he trained me. You could ask him what a pain in the ass I was. Oh my I God. <laughs> I give every coach so much credit. I could never. I, could I, never I can't, I can't do it either. I don't, I, don't know how, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they do it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, so um, yeah, I started working with him and it's crazy. Like the transformation and just that like first year. And um, I didn't think I was ready to do a show and he told me he all my shows like he well, my two shows he told me to do and both of them I was like no way I don't have a shot and um he told me just, just trust him and trust the process so I did mm. uh, and you did you you discussed this all with your husband and whatnot when uh, when it all came up and and you guys went to it went through it together and, and he was cool with it and side building yeah um yeah yes and no he He's not like huge on bodybuilding like me. Um, it's like he kind of like just has to like it because I like it type of thing. Well, I, I've seen him. He's in shape, you know. Oh, he's, absolutely. Yeah. 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 He, he loves working out. He does. Cro he used to do CrossFit more, but now I kind of pulled him back into like the real Lift, gym. Lifting, <laughs> and, lifting. Uh, All right. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I love a turnaround story. I love a mm -hmm. the dog story that that turns out really good. Um, and you're, you're not the only one this there's, there's, there's actually bodybuilding has a lot of people that, uh, dump an addiction for an addiction, if that makes sense, you yeah. know, and it gives them, it gives them structure, you know, Absolutely. And, that's what it is. It's huge. Yeah. And, I'd be lost without it. Yeah. I have, you're not the only person I've interviewed that had went through the same process. It's not, it's, 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 it's very common in, in that world, but thank God it is because Absolutely. who knows where you would be if you didn't find your husband and bodybuilding and so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. It's scary. I hope like people, if anyone's watching this, that's struggling, like, cause honestly, even in the bodybuilding world, like, you know, we could put alcohol and like street drugs aside. Like what about steroids and all that mm -hmm. shit? Like, I know that people can get addicted to that too. And, mm -hmm. um, 
Oh, there's there's a dark side to bodybuilding. Yeah, and there's I feel like really, it's not really talked really about enough. It's, it's not, like, and we've people pretend I, like it's like not a thing, and it is. And even for women, like there's a lot of women that, that like I know. Women. Yeah, and like you know the body dysmorphia, and like they run shit like year round, and it's just so unhealthy, you know, physically and mentally. And that's another thing, like mental health, that people don't talk about. That's right. You know, I struggle with depression, anxiety, and um like people especially men are like scared to talk about it and feel like they can't and um like they have to be like this strong like bodybuilder and yeah that's very true uh but that that's that's yeah that's very true it's actually uh men usually generally speaking men usually um suffer outwardly when women suffer inwardly if that makes sense you know because they uh, you can't say the word self-delete on youtube but 70% of the people in this country that self-delete are men and all the mass shooters are young men. And that's how they, they, they're exposing their stress and weaknesses outwardly. Well, women tend to, you know, suffer from depression, anxiety, you know, yeah. mental health disorder. You're, you're not the only one. I mean, I've, I've interviewed uh, Donna Salib, who's a great, she won the New York pro mm-hmm. uh, in bodybuilding and she had an eating disorder. I interviewed uh, Danny Broadhurst, who had uh, who was a uh, had a uh, you know, drug addiction as well, and now he is looking to turn pro uh, this year at the nationals. Um, but it's huge in this world, and like it's yeah. another thing that's just not talked about enough, you know. But you see, you did the right. You surrounded yourself by good people. I mean, you have your your husband, you have a family, you have a daughter, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. and you're, you're in nursing school, and you're an IFBB pro. And you're healthy and you're clean. And so it's a, it's a feel good story. Thank it, you. You're welcome. And I'm, and I'm glad that you're, you're doing much better because yeah. uh, a lot of, as you know, a lot of girls don't get out of that lifestyle. It's, and I know, and I'm glad you actually said that the nightlife is, is addicting the fast money. And Absolutely. yeah. When, and then you, you meet the certain type of guys that are in that lifestyle and they're not nice guys. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not nice guys. You know? And there. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, I mean, I don't know. I just. Right. Yeah. We'll get off, we'll get off that topic. I just wanted to uh, I wanted you to tell your feel good story because it's a feel good story. Yeah. You made a, a complete 180. Your life is a million times better now. You have a family. You're successful. And things Absolutely. are only going to you things are only going to get better from here. Always fighting to get better and chase after anything to better myself. It's Always. it's the only way to keep motivated. Mm-hmm. If you don't have hope and motivation, you got nothing, you know. So let's talk about figure, right? Okay. I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you feel the same way. I feel like figure is a class in bodybuilding that is becoming like almost forgotten. So, for example, like especially that wellness came out everybody is kind of on this wellness kick and um, bikini for some reason always strives. I don't know why, you know, I'm not, a, I'm <laughs> I don't not, know why either. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a bikini fan. I mean, the girls look great. I'm just not a fan of, of that, Me either. you know, and it seems like figure has suffered from wellness and physique. Women's physique has suffered when women's bodybuilding made a comeback with uh, wings of strength. Does that mm-hmm. sound accurate to you or no? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, actually, like working the shows now, you know, being at all the different local shows, I've noticed like the figure division is just so small. It's mm-hmm. like two, three girls, sometimes one girl. I'm like, what? what is happening? Like, there's yeah. nobody. Yeah. It's crazy. You're right. It's like, and you know what I think plays a big part too? Um, social media, because I feel like the newer generation now, um, it's like so trendy. And if somebody who's like famous on social media is in wellness or it, you know, everybody wants to be them. Yeah. And I hate it. I think it's like so ridiculous, but you know, just the whole social media thing. And like, it's like a big cult and like the generation under me is like, it's scary, but Gen Z Z is going to suffer big time. Yeah. I think that honestly, like has it a lot to do with it, but I, I agree with know. you. I don't know. I, I, I agree with you. And figures getting changing so much too. It's just, I mean, all the divisions are evolving. Mm-hmm. Like the, everybody's just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the truth. I mean, if you go back and watch, um, you know, the first women's physique and you go look at Daniel and Bailey, I mean, she, 
It's like the figure girls are bigger than her back then. I know. Today. The figure girls today are bigger than her back exactly. then. Exactly. I know. I look at her now and I'm like, wait a second. We're kind of like the same size. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, the, bigger, it's, actually. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. It re- yeah. really is. Um, and the women's bodybuilding, the women, what, what's strange is, is women's bodybuilding, they kind of reward the more aesthetic look. I mean, I know the girls have a lot of muscle, mm-hmm. but the real big, hard, chiseled girls, they kind of, they, they like the more aesthetic look. They kind of, uh, they reward Sheena Oleg or they reward like Aaliyah Denny or somebody that looks more athletic than actually big and very, very, very overly muscular, like, a, right. well, I don't know who, uh, you know. Um, I, I forget names that come to mind, but so now when you're in figure as opposed to wellness or opposed to, or as opposed to bikini or as opposed to physique, it, are the workouts different or is it just your body is genetically programmed for figure? Um, I would say, I, I personally think it's a little bit of both. Now, remember, I am still like brand new to this sport. Mm. So um, I personally think it's a little bit of both. Like obviously genetics plays a huge role. Like, you know, you look at like, like a Colombian girl, for example, like usually they are built thick legs, nice, big, butt. like they're probably going to do better in wellness. Could they do something else? Yes. But they'd probably be better off doing a specific division. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, for me, I kind of always had like a bigger back and I don't know, I guess like I, my legs are like my weak point. So like I have to work extra hard on my legs, but I do think genetics plays a huge role, but yeah, of course there's different workouts. Like if you're wellness or bikini, you're going to be doing a lot more of glutes and legs. Like I don't really do that much glute stuff. Whereas figure you're going to be doing more shoulders and back. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I have two shoulder days, two back days. Whereas. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Per week. Whereas like a bikini girl might have instead like three leg days, four Mm -hmm. leg days or something like that. And only one upper body day. Mm -hmm. So. And what does your daughter think of your of you when you're working out? Does she try to emulate you? Does oh she, yeah. Does she, she pose, loves it. does she pose with you? Oh my god, posing, forget it. She gets mad at me. Like if she's still sleeping and I pull out like my uh ring light thing and she hears me in my heels, she will jump up out of bed, wait for me. <laughs> and she puts, I swear to God, she puts on like her little dress up heels and she gets in the pictures with me. So she oh, gets pictures cute. of both of us all the time. <laughs> she like wants to press the button. She loves it. She knows all the poses. Oh, that's great. That's really Crazy. good. Okay, good, good. How old is she now? She'll be five next week. Wow, very nice. Okay. Yeah. You guys having a big party for her, birthday party? We are, yeah. What kind of party is it? Uh, in awesome. the backyard, we're going to have like a big blow up water slide and like the character that she likes is going to come and do face paint and all that. Yeah, right, right. Typical five-year-old birthday party. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, very nice, very nice. So did you have anybody that you liked in the division? Or it was just something that you wanted to do because people told you that you were good at, you could be good at it. Was there anybody that you looked at and was like, oh, wow, I, you know, I'd love to be like her or whatnot? So I kid you not, I knew nothing about, <laughs> I didn't even know anybody. I didn't know. I still, I embarrass myself at the show sometimes, like at New York, when I worked New York Pro, like I didn't know who half the people were. Mm. And like, I might have offended some people because I didn't know, you know, like I don't, I still don't really like follow that much or know that much. Um, you didn't offend anybody. I'm, I'm extremely it- passionate about it and I love it. And I'm learning so much work at the shows, but I really had, I knew not. Do you know when I did Tampa pro, I never even been to a show before. No, <laughs> really. I had no idea what to expect. Literally. What, what made you pick that show? My coach. Well, actually that was the year um, of the whole, like, um, COVID. Yeah. I didn't know how to say it, but yeah, COVID bullshit. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I, every single show I picked kept getting canceled. So I was in prep oh. for like nine months. It was like, oh, show got canceled. Show got canceled. And after like the third show or fourth show got canceled, my husband and Shane were like, we were thinking about like maybe. And I was like, I can't. Like, I worked so hard. I refused to quit. Like, I'm not going to. Mm-hmm. So um, then I think Shane like mentioned Tampa and was like, this this show is definitely happening so i was like all right let's go and and that was it that was it all right okay very cool very but cool. yeah but once i got to know the sport a little better i started looking at girls and at the time back then i loved um carly carly starling uh okay the, she's british right am i, I right so. 
I black think. hair she's no, like no, no, we no, have no, very no. similar bodies i feel like and she was someone that like i looked at and was like wow like i feel like i could look like that like that's i have potential to look like that uh, what is her, what her is her name more. carly starling i think uh let's see oh there we go oh okay yeah no no it's not the girl i was thinking of okay. yeah so okay. she was someone that like yeah, yeah, I, caught yeah, my I could, eye. I could see the similarity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. All right. Sounds pretty good. Would you consider doing any other categories if you moved around in, in, in uh, the pro division? No, I joke around like, because a lot of people come up to me at the shows and think that I do wellness. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, I, I, I get like very thick in my butt and legs in off season but when I, once i'm in prep it's like gone so yeah. i don't have enough muscle there to do that um i love the division but no i i don't think i'll ever leave figure i don't uh, want to get i love women's physique because i love the routines like i would love to do it for, just for the fact that like i could the art of the routines and creating it and like doing that but i i'm not willing to do what it takes to get that big yeah, that's that's so that's to me, yeah, like yeah. my femininity is important. Mm -hmm. So I and that's another thing that scares me about being in the pro league now is like, can I make it without all that stuff? Because I'm not willing to do it. Like it's not that important to me. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, there's more to life than bodybuilding, in my opinion. I absolutely love it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. and I'm not gonna stop, but I'm not gonna like ruin my health and my femininity for it so no, i i agree 100 percent. i don't know if you saw the let the show i did last with um danny broadhurst and jason owens but we talked about we talked about just that we talked about the the crazy amounts of drugs and the crazy amounts of fat burners we talked about dmp and we talked about t3 and clenbuterol and and all the uh drugs that and we talked about a particular trainer that trains girls and has some bodies on his on his watch yeah um, i know what you're talking about yeah and um uh, you know it isn't worth it. And I think, I think a lot of girls don't know what they're getting into. And then when they get too far in, it's too late. Exactly. You know, that's what's scary. And the more I learn in school, cause I'm learning so much, it blows my mind. Like the more I learn, the more I'm turned off by everything. Mm -hmm. Like I honestly almost said, like, I'm not even going to compete anymore. And then, you know, now I work at the shows and I'm like, Oh, I'm getting back up there. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, that, yeah. That's what happens. That's, that's, yeah. That's but I, happens. I still, I'll never go back on that word. Like I, this is evidence right here. Like I will not do yeah, that yeah. stuff. I, won't. I mean, listen, you, like you said, you have too much that is, you know, you have your family and family uh, is number one, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you have your daughter, you have your husband, and that is that, that takes precedence over anything. And if you're going to risk your health, you have to think about, think about that. And, yeah, like, is it really worth it? That's what it blows right. my mind. Like what, what people think, I don't know. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, it's, you know, you kind of have to be a little crazy uh, to really want to take it all the way because it, it can be dangerous and it can be, um, it, it could be unhealthy. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, and especially with women, uh, because once they start diving into the uh, PEDs, you know, you, you could have problems with you know, pregnancy later on, if they, if they're young girls and don't want to have a family or so on and so forth. Right. And it's not, it's not, uh, it's not uncommon. Let's put it that I way. know. And you I know? think, like you said, too, so many are just uneducated and, and maybe they trust, um, who tells them about it or they mm -hmm. think, be, I don't know, they think they're invincible. I don't know what it is. And then, like you said, it's too late. Like they don't realize what they're getting into. No, they, they don't. And I think they like the being the center of attention. They like being, you know, uh, you know, everybody loves to be beautiful and in shape and so on and so forth. I mean, look, the, the good side is it gave you a uh, structure and it gave you a way out of your formal, of your formal lifestyle. So that's the good side. And, but like anything else, uh, it could be, it could become extreme and that's when you don't want to, that's what you don't want to do, but that's you. You it sounds like you're keeping it balanced, so it doesn't sound like you yeah. have anything to really. To I'm going to really... give it a shot and see where I go. You know. Yeah. I, well, you genetically, you you have it. I mean, that's 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 obvious. If you turn pro at one show, genetically, you have it, and and that's and that's how you could tell. I mean, you know, look, look, you know, it, Jay Jay Cutler was you know team national champion, you know, and 
Phil Heath turned, turned to Miss Olympia after five pro shows. And, you know, it's just, you know, you know Sean Claridia turned pro as a bantamweight, and that was the 212 Mr. Olympia. You know, those guys are destined to, right. to be that. You know, they look at weights and they grow. Or the girls look at weights and they grow. And, and uh, the other thing with, uh, with women um, that isn't spoken about, and, you know, we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, but is the, um, the fetish of women's muscle. <laughs> that's that's huge too especially with the women's bodybuilders i interviewed alicia young okay and i asked her what was the strangest thing that somebody wanted to pay you for and uh she said uh this guy wanted me to fart on him <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you don't even want to know the type of stuff that I get in my DM. Yeah, it, I, I just it's mind blowing. Um the only DMs I get are people that I message to come on my show. That's it. I don't get these. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. No, it's crazy. Um so actually recently, like I so I did one of those like anonymous question things and I got so many people asking for feet pictures. Oh yeah. yeah like yeah. it huge. was insane. And I, I always knew like, you know, some people had a thing for feet, which whatever, but I didn't realize it was like that big of a, of a thing. So I was mm -hmm. like, wow, like I should do something with this. Like, this, is, <laughs> this is a no brainer. Yeah. So yeah. I wanna, literally, yeah. I literally like posted that I was going to sell feet pics and it like popped off and I made like $300 in one oh day my God. on fucking oh. feet pictures. And I swear <laughs> nothing else, nothing else. I'm not that type I of girl. You. I would never, I, I believe no you. disrespect to any girls that do that, but I, that's not me. And I literally just took pictures of my feet, like different places, like in the sand, up on the dashboard, like, you know, <laughs> whatever. And dudes, and literally actually yesterday I had someone message me and was like, cause I hadn't really posted about it. And he was like, hey, are you still offering the fee picks? And I was like, yeah, oh, made Jesus. a quick hundred bucks. And then, <laughs> and then, so you said the weirdest thing. I mean, recently that I can think of as the same dude asked me if I would be, let me read it to you actually, because <laughs> I want to make sure I say it right. Hold on. He said, random question. Would you do a foot domination slash humiliation video and i said what does that entail oh my god and he said you being mean and telling me i'm your foot slave and how you'd make me worship your feet dear god man so here's my question how much would i charge for something like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> because yeah. listen if i'm not i'll easily just wear my clothes and show you my feet and talk whatever i mean if you're sure if you want to pay me money but <laughs> <laughs> uh, word of advice to, to, don't go down that path do yourself it's, a favor it's a slippery slope don't go down that path i uh i interviewed one other uh female bodybuilder I, and, and we talked off off camera and i won't reveal her name and i because i asked her the same question and um she didn't want to answer on camera but she answered off camera and she actually said that somebody offered her um six thousand dollars to be naked, put high heels on, and step on a kitten and kill it. What? Yeah. yeah. That's weird. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> like, and then she said no. Yeah, I thought the foot thing was weird. That's fucking weird. Like, and then, that's. And then she said no. And then he upped it to 8000 And she said, I don't care how much you offer me. I'm not doing it. Right. And, um, yeah, there's, there's some... What? There's some strange, you know, my wife thinks I'm weird in bed. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> not, not even Look, I'm, I'm <laughs> not very, even. like, open to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's normal as human beings to, like, be attracted to, like, different weird things, like, whatever. You know what I mean? To each their own. And that's, like, fine. But the fact that people, like, are comfortable enough to DM random people, like, a straight like you know what i'm saying like it's one thing if you're like behind closed doors with your significant other or whatever do you be as weird as you want right, but right, right, right. you're gonna just message me i don't even know you and like say this kind of stuff well there's no con there's no there's no face-to-face -face consequence that's true you, yeah. you dm somebody you know there's no you know you would never say that in person 
Right. You, know, you would never, you would never say that in person. Yeah. I've uh, had people like say, like, Oh, can you mail me your sweaty socks or like your sweaty underwear all stuff? I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. At least and I didn't got, do it, but yeah, I've had it. <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, you know, it's a slippery slope, you know, I know. because what I, I don't have to tell you, you know, that once you do one thing, it justifies the next thing, you know? Well, okay. You know, and it's the same thing with the only fans thing. And mm -hmm. it's, it just leads to, it just leads to more and more and more because, oh, I can make more money doing this. And I can make more money doing that. Yeah. And, and before you know it, you know, you got, I mean, you know, I personally would never, but that's why I stopped like posting about the feet thing. Cause it was like, people are just disrespectful. And it was like, yeah. I was like, look, I, I said, I would show you my feet. Like I'm not showing you anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would be like assholes. Like, oh, what the fuck? Like, okay. I'm yeah, doing yeah, exactly. That's what, uh, that's what you got to deal with. So, you know, we, we don't need to, uh, Go down that, go down that road, <laughs> you, know? you know, it's just like, like you said, you know, behind closed doors, you're with your husband, your significant other, you know, you, you do whatever makes you guys happy. Right. Um, but the social media thing, it really links too many people to too many people easily, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and there's no consequence when you ask something stupid or say something stupid, what, what's going to happen? You get blocked. You know right. what I mean? You're not going to get smacked in the face or you, your husband's not going to punch him in the face. Like, cause he said it in, in person. Yeah. Right. So like, would this guy come up to me in person and ask me to be his whatever. Humiliating? No, <laughs> not, yeah, exactly. There's no yeah, way. Yeah. Especially not me. Cause I have like severe resting bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> no <Okay>. way. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Exactly. So, you know, we, we, yeah, I, I don't condone that crap at all. And you know, whatever, but um, listen, Nicole, I'm going to let you go. I, I really appreciate you coming on and spending time and, telling your story because it's a fascinating story it's a it's a great turnaround story on the dog story and i'm glad that you're doing well i'm really happy that you have a beautiful family and um you're doing well for yourself and you're clean and whatnot it's it's a feel-good story Thank uh, you. and i and i hope more people i hope more people listen to this and understand and um me too i hope so yeah absolutely and uh don't go away i have a question to ask you but one thing i want you to want you to do for me is I want you to tell everybody out there to like and subscribe to Serious and Silliness. Okay. Listen up, guys. You heard the man. You need to like and subscribe to Serious and Silliness. You won't regret it. Lots of good stuff out there. All right. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. It was a